I've noticed, and tell me if you can confirm this, it seems to me, Aaron, that the West, meaning Zelensky and Joe Biden and NATO, they don't really want to negotiate yet. Is that, is, what is your assessment of that? Yeah, Zelensky's in a tough position because essentially he's caught between the far right in Ukraine who has literally threatened to kill him if he makes peace with Russia. He's literally faced threats on his life from the far right militants who have a outsized role in the Ukrainian armed forces. They've threatened to kill him if he makes peace with Russia. Uh, Max Blumenthal and Alex Rubenstein wrote about that at the Gray Zone recently. And then so he's caught between the far right and then he has the Washington, which has not stepped in to basically help him out to say, look, we're going to help you stand up to this far right fascist threatening your life if you uh, make peace with the Russian backed rebels in the east. So the U.S. has essentially sided with the far right inside Ukraine. So Zelensky's in a tough spot and he's chosen basically to follow the orders of Washington. And so far, I agree with you, those appear to be not seriously negotiating to the point where, Jim, I don't know if you caught this, but a member of the Ukrainian negotiating team was assassinated no. by the Ukrainian intelligence. Yes, there was a Ukrainian diplomat who was a part of the team who went to negotiate with the Russians. He was pictured in those talks on the Belarusian border, and the next day he was assassinated. And the Ukrainian uh, intelligence said that he had resisted arrest when they went to arrest him for being a traitor and they had to shoot him. There's no way that happened. He was assassinated. And what's interesting is another a branch of the Ukrainian government hailed him as a hero, which speaks to the deep division that there is inside Ukraine and how much disarray there is inside the government of Ukraine, despite the efforts to portray it as like this you know, they're standing up to the Russian invaders yeah. and they're all unified and all that stuff. But that that's not the case. And so, yeah, look, the what whole, are Russian demands? The, the, let me, let me, can I, here, can I yeah. show you this? Yeah. Let me show you yeah. this. So according to uh, Patrick Revel, who covers uh, Moscow, he says the Kremlin has announced its demands for ending the war in Ukraine. Ukraine must change its constitution to guarantee that it won't join any blocks, meaning like NATO. So it'll stay an independent country. Uh, Ukraine must change its constitution to get the. Um, it must also recognize Crimea as part of Russia. Now that's a whole nother story. Uh, and it must recognize the eastern separatist regions as independent, meaning the Donbass, uh, which is what the Ukraine government has never stopped shelling and killing fourteen thousand people since two thousand five because when they overthrew the democratically elected government of Ukraine, those people who were native, Russians, first speakers, ethnic Russians who lived in eastern Ukraine, they didn't want to go along with the coup that just overthrew their government and they didn't want to, and that government that was friendly to Russia. And now we're installing a coup which is now friendly to the European Union. They didn't want to go along with that. So th there was supposed to be a deal already in place called the Minsk Agreements where Ukraine government agreed to stop shelling those people in eastern Ukraine. Well, they didn't. And for eight straight years, they've been killing people, Nazis, literal Nazis, the Azov Battalion, have been killing Russian, ethnic Russians in eastern Ukraine. So that's when they say Putin invaded not to start a war, but to end one. That's what they're talking about. And that's always the part that gets left out. And so this is what his demands are. You must recognize. So they'd already agreed to this, by the way. Ukraine had already agreed to recognize the Donbass, the eastern part of Ukraine, let them have their own elections and have, let them have independence. And they were supposed to do that and we wouldn't have any more fighting. They didn't do any of those things and there's never been a ceasefire to the fighting. Well, Jimmy, let me say one thing. This demand from Russia that Kiev recognized the breakaway republics and the Donbass is, is independent, that's actually a new demand. For the last eight years or seven years, as you say, since there, there was been a peace agreement on the books that just called for the Donbass to stay a part of Ukraine, but to have autonomy, to have autonomy. Right. And in, ex in exchange, they would demilitarize. So Russia, up until basically last week or two weeks ago, was not demanding that Ukraine recognize these republics as being independent. They were actually, Russia was supporting these republics staying a part of Ukraine, just as long as they had some limited form of autonomy. But it was Ukraine with U.S. backing that refused to implement the, the accord that it signed on to. And that's why Russia now is saying our demand is you recognize these as independent because you lost your opportunity instead of agreeing implementing the agreements you agreed to in minsk 
seven years ago. You've been waging this war. So your time has passed. Now you have to recognize them as independent. So it was Russia that was actually recognizing a deal that with the exception of Crimea, which it took immediately after the 2014 coup, with the exception of Crimea, it would have kept Ukraine's borders as they were intact. Now that's changed because it was Kiev with the backing of the US and under pressure from the far right in, in Ukraine that was refusing to recognize to, to implement the Minsk Accords, which it, which it signed on to in 2015. Well, here's what Danny Haifong has to say about it. He said Zelensky, who's the president of Ukraine, Zelensky is once again demonstrating that he's a puppet of the United States and NATO by rejecting Russia's demands for neutrality and demilitarization. These were expressed well before the intervention, and there's no reason to believe Russia wouldn't cease hostilities if they were met. So he's making the case, he's from the Black Agenda Report, and he's making the case that we've, we provoked this, and or Zelensky did, and that he could end it if he wants. And he could. Zelensky could end it if he wants. But he's not. So those are Putin's demands. They, they, Zelensky should accept them, and we should move on. What's going on uh, internationally? Um, how do we get to the place where, you know, Putin decides he's going to just invade Russia? Nothing like this has happened since World War II.